All right, so I'm going to throw my hat into the ring and do a little something that I haven't talked about before. Uh, so I'm Kevin Mandeville. I'm a product manager here at Litmus. Uh, I work uh, especially on Builder, but sort of build and test anything with our products that has to do with building and testing emails. Um, and so what I want to talk about here is those save the date links there. Um, something that we've used in a bunch of our emails, and this is something that's common for emails when you have events, whether that's an in-person event or an online event like a webinar, uh, to be able to have users save the date, input it into their calendars. Uh, well, if you look under the hood of this button here, this actually wasn't just one button. These were actually two different buttons. Uh, there was a button for Gmail with the Gmail link, and then there was a button for all other clients. Uh, and I'll break down the difference. So we stacked uh, the two on top of one another. And if you notice, the top one is an ICS file. Uh, and this is for desktop uh, calendar programs to, to use as a base. And that was the default version that we displayed. And then below that is actually a special link for Google Calendar. Uh, so you'll notice that we are hiding this by default, giving it a display none. Uh, and then you'll see that we have extra classes here, and all that we did to swap that for the, the Gmail environment um, was, was to hide and show. And so you can actually use this bit of CSS here. So if you have uh, the underline uh, selector uh, with the uh, general sibling selector and the div tag with your class of foo, this is a way to target classes with Gmail rendering specifically. Uh, basically, Gmail converts the doc type to a U, uh, and then it converts the body to a div. So this is unique styling that for anything that you give a class uh, that's nested inside of that, uh, it's going to target Gmail, which is really fun. So all that we did is give uh, a class a Gmail hide for that uh, ICS file so that it would hide for Gmail, and then uh, turn on the, the Gmail button for the Gmail link. So just a simple swap using this CSS. I love using addtocalendar.com, which is a way to simplify the creation of those links for adding to calendar. So instead of having to uh, manually create those calendar links, you can do this. You can create an ICS file or whatnot. But it's interesting. They also have uh, use the add to calendar link in an email campaign. And they have a whole bunch of different options, including Outlook Online and Yahoo Calendar. Uh, and so this has got me thinking more for some of our emails. What if we took all of these and expanded upon the use case so that we tried to target for all four of these environments? Um, what would this look like? So we want to start off with an event uh, or an ICS file, uh, which is the base experience that you want. That's the default that we start with. We're going to show this and then hide it in the other environments. So we can give it a, a class, a Gmail hide, to hide it. So display none for Gmail. We want to hide it in the Outlook web app environments as well, because we're going to overwrite that. So you can actually use the attribute selector hack. So any CSS that you precede with the attribute selector, Outlook basically strips that. Outlook web app, so outlook.com and Office 365. Outlook strips that and then it just reads the class for you. So that's unique behavior for the Outlook web apps. So this is, this is the hack that you can do for that, and we just added a display none for it, uh, for that link. And then we're going to want to hide it for Yahoo, because we have a Yahoo link. So we'll give it a Yahoo hide class. Um, whoops, there's actually a typo in there. But if you do at media Yahoo without the class on that first line, that's a copy and paste error. But just at media Yahoo, and then inside of that, give it a special class. Yahoo Mail doesn't uh, read this as a media query. It basically breaks it down. So this would be CSS styling that gets applied only for Yahoo. Uh, that's the correct uh, definition there, just at media Yahoo. And then what we want to do is, well, all of those other links of the Google Calendar, Outlook Online, and Yahoo Calendar, we want to hide by default and only turn them on for their respective environments. So we'll give them a display none inline. And when that happens, we get, if you look in any base sort of environment, here's Apple Mail. But if you look at most clients, there'll be the default ICS file. Then all you need to do is then just go into those alternative uh, links and give them classes that will then turn them on. So it's display none inline by default. Then we're going to give it a class for Gmail with the hack to display block. 
and we're going to see just the save the date Google Calendar link in Gmail. If we give it a class to turn on for Outlook Web Apps, we're going to see it just for Outlook Online there. And then finally, if we do the same for Yahoo, uh, again, apologize for the typo on the media, I'll fix that. Uh, just turning that on for important uh, for Yahoo, and you get it, uh, just that link for, for Yahoo. So in all, this is what the CSS looks like. It's very minimal. And you want to make sure that you break up these into two separate style blocks. The styles on the right would actually be deemed invalid by Gmail and strip the entire style block if this was all one. So you just want to make sure that you put CSS that Gmail would deem invalid in its own separate style block uh, so you don't have to worry about Gmail messing up your email. Uh, so yeah, that's add to calendar targeting essentially and figuring out can we personalize the experience of these add to calendar links uh, for anything else. I think it's interesting, you know, maybe we don't know what users prefer for their calendar. That might be some interesting information to gain because we could always personalize it for them uh, in future campaigns. But anyways, this was something that I had done, haven't really talked about before. It uses pre-existing hacks, but I thought it was an interesting use case. So uh, that's all for add to calendar.